Hi guys, welcome back. It's Mrs. Butler. We're going to be looking at El Nino and La Nina today. We're going to be able to describe how they affect our weather. Um, as always, take notes when I ask you to. Pause the video whenever you would like or watch it again and pause it whenever you need to. Um, here we go. All right, what is an El Nino? Have you ever heard of that word before? It's a strange one. It's actually Spanish. So if you're familiar with Spanish, you might know what this word means, but it has nothing to do with what um, happens with the weather. So let's check it out on the next slide. El Nino is characterized by unusually warm ocean temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. Lots of fancy words there. Let me break it down for you. So El Nino is when the water in the Pacific Ocean around the equator is unusually warm. It doesn't mean it's really warm and hot and boiling. It just means it's warmer than its normal temperatures. And it's just a few degrees, nothing drastic, but a very unusual temperature is what you're looking for. Just a little bit warmer than what it's used to. And you can see on this globe, um, where the red is, is the warm temperatures. The equator, you know, would be going right through the middle of that. Um, so this is an El Nino from, um, from the air, from the space, using satellite images. So this is what an El Nino might look like. Make sure you get that definition down. Pause if you need to. Here is um, the differences between normal water temperatures and an El Nino pretty obvious when there's an El Nino, don't you think? In a normal conditions, we have just warm, warm waters over here on the west side of the Pacific, but in an El Nino, those warm waters go all the way across and extend east. Um, an El Nino occurs every three to seven years. It's not like clockwork, so it could be three, it could be seven, it could be five. It really just depends on what's going on with our earth usually happens in December or January, so usually in the winter. So we're kind of right in the thick of it right now. So we maybe we're in an El Nino, who knows? But if you are familiar with Spanish, El Nino is Spanish for um, the boy child or little boy. Um, so like I said, it doesn't really have anything to do with little boy, but that's what they've named it. And I don't know why, but maybe you could research it. because I know you're wondering that. But there's what it looks like, normal conditions and El Nino conditions. Now, how does El Nino affect us around the globe with our weather? Um, here are the four main things that might happen when we are in an El Nino. Um, there's gonna be increased rainfall across the Southern US that could affect us, um, but definitely um, the um, states that are closer to the Pacific are going to experience a lot more rainfall. Also Peru, which is a country in South America, and right on the Pacific Ocean also experiences much more rainfall, which could then cause lots of flooding because it's lots of rain that we're not used to. Um, and then the exact opposite is gonna happen on the west side of the Pacific Ocean. Um, you're gonna have droughts. It's gonna be dry weather. And when you have dry weather and not a lot of rain, you're going to maybe get brush fires like in Australia. Australia is on the west of the Pacific. And I'll show you that in a map in just a second. Make sure you get these consequences down from El Nino. So go ahead and pause if you need to, to get these bullets down. Now here's just another way to look at it. I want you to see kind of, this is a little more detailed. The brown parts here are countries, our land. So North America, South America, um, Australia is just on the edge here in New Guinea. So these are countries, continents that are on the, um, the west of the Pacific, where North America and South America are on the east of the Pacific. Um, trade winds, you know, you've learned about those. They're winds right in the middle of our globe. They're going to blow normally and keep that warm water on the west side of the Pacific. Um, and so that warm water stays there. The rain stays over on the western Pacific Ocean. So New Guinea, Australia, they're used to all of that rain. Um, and those are normal conditions. Now, El Nino conditions in the Pacific, you can see that warm water has moved east, and that's when the trade winds are weakened and they can't keep the warm water um, west, and so that warm water moves east, and so all that moisture moves east, and that's where the rain comes to southern U.S., 
or into Peru and South America. And since that warm water has moved away from the West Pacific, the moisture has moved away. And so it's drier in New Guinea and Australia. And you can see that warm water has moved away and that's where they get their droughts. Now there are ways that we can tell an El Nino is going on. The NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration is an organization that's full of scientists that studies the ocean and the atmosphere and weather. Um, they have buoys out in the middle of the ocean that are tracking temperature and currents and winds. And that's how they know when we're in an El Nino or when we're in normal conditions. And these buoys might send data back on graphs that look like this. These are normal conditions um, in the Pacific Ocean. There's a lot of technical stuff here that you don't need to get into, but just focus on the colors. You see orange and yellow and greens and getting into the blues. And we know blues are cold and reds are hot. Um, and down here, we just see greens and some little bit of yellow right there. So this is normal conditions. Now, this is what graphs would come back in an El Nino. Check out these colors. Up here, there are hardly any tiny bit right there, blues or greens. It's all orange, dark orange and yellows. So we know warm, warm, warm waters. And down here, we have the orange and the red and the yellow, which we didn't have hardly any before. So let me flip back and then take a look again. This is normal conditions and this is in an El Nino year. So big differences in the temperatures and winds, which is what they are measuring there. Now I have a funny way for you to remember El Nino. You can copy this down in your notebook. Um, just a silly thing to do. Go ahead and draw yourself a little boy. A little stick figure, little boy is good. A B on his head for boy. Um, this helps us remember that El Nino is a boy. So draw yourself this stick figure. Now, my little boy is going to be standing in the Pacific Ocean because we know El Nino takes place only in the Pacific Ocean around the equator. So I drew my blue. You could go grab a blue marker if you have one. And I put a P so I know this is the Pacific Ocean. Now, I also drew a Santa hat on him because El Nino occurs in the winter, December, January, and that's right around Christmas time. So that helps me remember that El Nino takes place in the winter. So make sure you get your little Santa hat on your boy. And then I have added, these could, these could have dual meanings here. So it could be two things. Those could be sweat drops, sweating profusely because of the hot, dry weather that he's experiencing in the Western Pacific. Or those could also be raindrops for the wet flooding he might be experiencing um, on the Eastern Pacific side. So dual meaning there, raindrops, sweat drops, whichever you want to think of them as, get them on your boy. And then the last thing is that I drew a dead fish. So sad, but that warm water in the Pacific not only affects our weather, but it affects the living organisms within that water who are used to certain temperatures. So the warm water can also hurt the ecosystems in the Pacific Ocean. So that's my dead fish. Now, hopefully you had a little fun with that and you drew that a little bit. Just a silly way to remember El Nino. Um, but one last thing, there's also El La Nina. Did you know that? So El Nino is when we have warm temperatures in the Pacific Ocean. Well, La Nina is literally the exact opposite. Um, it's characterized by unusually cold ocean temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. So same exact place around the equator in the Pacific Ocean, but this time our temperatures are unusually cold. So you have your normal temps and we're dropping a few degrees. So again, not freezing, not like it's an ice cap in the Pacific Ocean, but it's just colder than what it's used to. So just a few degrees. And also La Nina means little girl. So their names are exact opposites of each other too. So pretty cool. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go check out the map of the United States and its water temperatures in the Pacific Ocean to see what we're experiencing right now. La Nina remembers warm. No, 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 rewind. La Nina is cold, El Nino is warm, and then just normal conditions would be, or we wouldn't have either. So let's check out what is happening. Ooh, 
We do this every year, guys, and I've never seen one like this. This obvious. Hopefully you're realizing that we, and you can read on the side there, that this is a La Nina. You can see it is cold temperatures along the equator. Let's see, off to the side it says that October 2020, this really started to happen. So this picture is from October 2020. Um, you can see that the difference in temperature, if you're looking at the, the blue, if it goes really, really dark, it's nine degrees difference. So like I said, it's just a few degrees. We're not talking about it freezing. Um, but this light blue, a little bit darker blue, so this is probably like five or six degrees cooler than normal. Um, and it says forecasters estimate a 95% chance La Nina will last through the winter for us and it's likely to be a strong one. And La Nina, I know we didn't talk about what weather La Nina brings, but here's what they say. La Nina winters tend to favor warm and dry conditions in the southern tier of the U.S. And that's us. So we are probably going to have a warmer and drier winter. So maybe not any snow for us, but snowier than average across much of the northern U.S. So if we lived in the north, they would be getting lots more snow. It'll be interesting to see if that happens this year, but pretty cool. You guys are lucky to see this. Most years we don't see anything, so this is great. I hope you learned a little bit about El Nino and La Nina, and there's a video that you can watch next on Canvas and a quiz to take. We'll see you later.